uh, here's the new DYS Mars 2400 kV motor. Uh, this was sent in by DYS. Uh, thanks for sending it so I can test it and uh, uh, share the results with you guys. Uh, so always they give you two extra lug nuts, nylocks, locks, and some uh, mounting screws. So there's the motor and now they are giving you pretty long wires which uh, that's a good thing and these are actually very very long they're 200 millimeter wires so so pretty pretty long the ways hasn't been giving given stator size anymore in the motors ever since the uh, the fire which was a 2206 uh, then they went to the storm which was a 2207 and now the Thor is a 2407 and this one's the Mars, which is probably at 2305 or 2306. We'll find out soon enough. I'll measure the stator. They're keeping the same theme as as far as the uh, the design of the armature, as the same as the Thor, and, uh, and the fire and the storm too. The the bell is almost the same pattern, the same design here, which uh, has worked pretty well. Um, a lot of people are saying that uh, you know they they're pretty durable they they do very well in uh, with the views they deal very well with the views so it's pretty much a full feature motor it's got all the latest bells and whistles it's got a one piece shaft a hollow shaft it's only partially hollow it's only hollow up to right there as you can see they're not hollowing and not that much which uh, is kind of interesting before they would be hollow all the way so uh, you know that it doesn't really save that much weight and it's in a part of the motor that doesn't as far as rotating mass it's in the center so that doesn't affect anything a couple of you know it's probably not even a gram that you would save so that's good enough uh, and then uh, shaft uh, at the bottom portion uh, they're not using retaining screws anymore they're using these circlips so some people prefer the the retaining screws so other people don't mind these these are fine they're a little bit more difficult to take out uh, but you know the the retaining screws also have their dis their disadvantages uh, sometimes uh, if you get too much uh, if you tighten them too much they might bind the bearings sometimes they, they it's hard to take them out because of the you have to use a uh, thread lock and uh, some people actually ended up uh, messing up the screw heads so so whatever, you know, it's, it's either one is fine. And this one is pretty much like Thor, where it's uh, they're using minimal base to save weight. Uh, they call this a uh, style bell type motor, uh, so it doesn't use uh, the full base. So this this style has been around for a long, long time. So it's nothing new. They're just pretty much revisiting it, revisiting it. So it's uh, it's good, you know, it saves saves weight. And uh, for the most part, the usually the the arm has enough uh, protection so that uh, when you hit, it's kind of hard to get something to hit just right there to damage the motor. So so far, it hasn't been a an issue to have that uh, to have the bare minimal here at the motor at the base of the motor. All right, so let's uh, get a weight on this motor. Uh, so that's gonna be. I'm gonna weigh it with the included length of wire, which is a 200 millimeter. Uh, that's what they give you with this motor, which is pretty good. So you can use four and one ESCs. I'm gonna weigh this much wire, which is 450 millimeters of the same gauge of wire. Uh, this is what you would remove, what you would cut off if you wanted to leave the motor wires at about 50. 50 millimeters which is right about right about there that's how much you would use most people use that much if you have arm mounted ESCs uh, sometimes shorter uh, sometimes you only need that like that much but um, I'm leaving it at 50 uh, so if you cut off that much length of wire that weighs 3.5 grams so that's how much you would remove so now let's see what the motor weighs with the included wire so 
So it was 34.5 with the included wire. 34.6. 34.6 with the included wire. So if you remove uh, 3.5, you end up with 31.1. Uh, so that's that's just about how much the motor weighs. 31 grams, let's say. So not not too bad. Not too bad uh, weight. Uh, looks like uh, some of the um, weight savings uh, uh, features they use uh, work pretty well. All right, so now, now let's get a closer look. Let's see what the motor looks uh, uh, under the magnifying glass. All right, so let's get a closer look at the motor. Here it is, uh, as you can see, pretty pretty good uh, craftsmanship. Same, uh, same style as the Thor, Fire, and uh, Storm. And there's the... Uh, clip and the, the bearing, uh, they're using ESO bearings, uh, 4 millimeter bore by 9 millimeter diameter by 4 millimeter uh, width. So it's a pretty pretty good uh, bearing, pretty much standard in all the motors uh, these days with the 4 millimeter shaft. Uh, ESO is a pretty known brand, uh, should be should be durable I think. So hopefully you know, hopefully no issues with the bearings. And as you can see, uh, you can more or less see the air gap, uh, the the space between uh, the magnet face and the stator coil face. Uh, not too bad. It's uh, not not overly tight and not too wide either. Uh, in some motors, they they try to get it like really tight like very minimal space which gives you uh, it gives you more thrust you know uh, but uh, it has a slight disadvantage that sometimes that creates a lot of uh, a lot of uh, noise uh, back back into the ESCs and into the it, it sometimes it, it makes its way into the the flight controller and all the electronics so so uh, sometimes the the motors don't they make it makes it hard, hard to tune so sometimes the motors don't feel they kind of feel rough but it's only because of that uh, so there's you know there's always a balance between getting the most or getting smooth uh, smooth uh, performance in the motor so so that one uh, the air gap is, is pretty good not too bad so now let's uh, look at the Let's look at the uh, motor parts itself. Uh, here's the uh, here's the bell. There's the magnets. Uh, not uh, don't think these are exactly uh, arc magnets. Uh, they're just regular blocks. So. And here are the windings. Uh, it looks like they're using multi-strand wire. And the stator height. Uh, this is uh, let's see. This is. Looks like a six millimeter height, and the diameter uh, so the diameter is 20, 23. So it's a 2306, 2306 size. So that's uh, that's pretty good size uh, these days. So this should uh, should perform pretty well. So we'll put this together and uh, let's uh, put it on the thrust stand, let's see what it does. I also have the uh, also have the 27 the 2750 version of this which I also I'll also be testing. Uh, so let's uh, let's get some numbers.
All right, let's look at the results of the thrust test for the DYS Mars 2400 kV motor. Now, this one actually came in at about 2450 kV as measured in my thrust stand. Uh, so that's uh, pretty close to the specified uh, kV value. So with the usual props, uh, 5 inch, as you can see, 1277 at 31 amps, pretty manageable for this prop. Uh, same with the 5040 by 3, uh, pretty pretty good numbers, 1365 thrust and 34 amps. Uh, that's pretty manageable. Keep in mind that uh, these uh, amps here on the static thrust test are about 25 to 35% higher, so so you gotta subtract uh, 25 to 35% less. You have to subtract that much. So multiply these max numbers by 0.75 if you wanna be conservative, or multiply by 0.65 uh, for a more aggressive number so that you can size your ESCs properly. So on the, the Lumineer 5050, as you can see, the uh, thrust keeps increasing, which uh, shows the motor still has some torque uh, left over to spin the props. Of course, the amps are gonna gonna go up as well. On the DYS uh, 5045 by 3, this one is uh, a, basically a clone of the DAL uh, 5045 by 3 V2. So almost 1500 uh, grams at uh, 41 amps. And then we come to the DAL C5046, the Cyclone 1447. So it's actually uh, kind of interesting. Uh, it came lower than than this DYS uh, for about the same the same amps. So that that was quite interesting. Uh, uh, then as we move on to the six inch prop, uh, yep, the motor the motor keeps uh, keeps putting up the thrust. Uh, Seventeen hundred grams on the on the sixty forty on the King Kong sixty forty at uh, forty six amps. So that's a uh, uh, that's a pretty good number. And on 3S, uh, it's also uh, pretty viable for the 6-inch prop, 1,100 uh, grams at 30 amps. And on the 5046, also almost 1 kilogram, 980 basically, at 27 amps. Overall, uh, this motor is pretty pretty capable motor. Uh, it's doing pretty well. I think uh, it's a very, should be a very good option for you guys that want to run this on 4S. Uh, should also be able to run on 5S, I think, uh, with the appropriate uh, prop. Uh, this uh, 5040 by 3 should be able to run on 5S, no problem. Uh, so I decided to test on 5S. Uh, I went ahead and tested the HQ 5043 by 3 V1S. Uh, this one uh, came in at uh, 1809 grams of thrust, uh, 46.4 and so uh, quite high on 5S, but uh, again, remember, uh, these are static, so it'll be much less in the air. So uh, the motor barely got uh, warm. Uh, I didn't see any alarming temps on the motor uh, when I when I used my temp gun on it. Uh, it was reading uh, well below any temperature of concern uh, right about uh, 45 or so uh, centigrade uh, so that that's not bad uh, it was a short run so it shouldn't be any hotter than 55 or so degrees uh, centigrade you should be able to hold it in your hand uh, without burning you so that, that's <laughs> that's my uh, my way of checking but i think it, it should be able to run on 5s this motor on on these props uh, Probably these more aggressive props, uh, you need to be more careful. But on the 5040x3 and 5043x3, it should, should be okay, I think. Alright, uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you on the next video.